What's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. If you're new here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. This is my data science statistics tutorial series where I give you all the statistics knowledge that you need to conquer the data science world. I just did a video where I talk about the normal distribution. If you haven't seen that one yet, there will be a card for it up on the screen here. I highly recommend watching that video before you watch this one. But anyway, the normal distribution is the most popular distribution when you have any kind of continuous data, but we also have to talk about one of the most popular distributions for categorical data, and that's the binomial distribution. The other super common distribution used for categorical data is what's called the Poisson distribution, and we'll usually use that when we have some kind of count data. The binomial distribution can show up when we have the following circumstances. We need to have repeated trials, we need to have two possible outcomes at each trial, and we'll typically call those success and failure and the probability of success and failure are the same on each and every single trial. Now that all may seem a little bit confusing or abstract, so we're going to illustrate the binomial distribution with an example. So let's just suppose there's some disease out there where the mortality rate is 5%. Putting that a different way, you could say the survival rate is 95%. Now obviously, it would never be the case that everybody in the whole world who's exposed to this disease has the exact same chances of surviving and dying, because obviously diseases are complex, human immune response is based on a huge variety of factors, but once you start looking at more specific groups, let's just say really young people or really old people, this is probably a fairly reasonable way of modeling problems like those. Now let's say we have one single subject. Their chance of survival is just the overall success rate, or 95%. Similarly, their chance of dying is the overall failure rate, or 5% here. Now, when you have one single case like this with two possible outcomes, success or failure, and we know what those probabilities are, we have a very specific case called a Bernoulli trial, also known as a Bernoulli random variable or a Bernoulli distribution. So that's simple and straightforward enough, right? Now let's extend that same example, and let's suppose we have 20 people, they're all infected with this disease, the survival rate is still 95%, and we want to calculate the probability that no more than one person dies. Here is a case of multiple Bernoulli trials. So you have multiple trials with two possible outcomes, success or failure, and the probability is the same on every single trial. This is an application for the binomial distribution. And the binomial distribution is completely defined by two terms. That's the sample size n and the probability of success, often denoted by p. Sometimes you'll see the failure rate denoted as q or 1 minus p, but it's just 1 minus the success rate. All right, now let's look at the formula for a binomial probability calculation. So the probability that you have k successes, given you have n trials, is this weird looking thing over here. It's equal to n choose k times the probability of success to the power k times the failure rate, 1 minus p, to the power n minus k. For those of you unfamiliar with the choose function, it's basically the number of ways that you can choose something from something else. So let's just, as an example, look at three choose two. We have three balls and we want to pick two out of the three. Well, we could pick a red and a green. We could pick a green and a blue. Or we could pick the red and the blue. So three choose two is three because there's three different ways to pick two balls. The formula for the choose function is n choose k equals n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And any scientific calculator in the world is going to have both the choose function and just the factorial function if you want to calculate it by hand yourself. Now that we understand this formula, we can apply it. Remember we wanted to know the probability that no more than one person dies. 
Now, this is the exact same thing as saying 19 or more people survive. So we could have 19 people survive, or we could have 20 people survive. And we're going to run the binomial formula for k equals 19 and k equals 20. Remember that we have 20 different trials. The probability of success is 0.95. So all we really need to do is plug in n and p. We solve for the probability x equals 19, probability x equals 20, add them up and we get a probability of 0.736. This is the chance that no more than one person dies. Equivalently, 19 or more people survive. Now that you hopefully see how to use the binomial distribution to perform probability calculations, just a couple more properties for the binomial distribution. You can calculate an expected value, a standard deviation, a variance, all of that for the number of successes. The expected value is just n times p. The standard deviation is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. And the variance is just the square of the standard deviation. So that would be n times p times times 1 minus p, forget the square root sign. Now let's extend this example again, and let's say we have 5,000 subjects who were exposed to the disease. Now you ask, what's the mean and standard deviation of the number of people who are going to survive? Well, the mean would be 5,000 times 0.95, that's 4,750, then just do the math for the standard deviation, square root of 5,000 times 0.95 times 1 minus 0.95, and you'll get a standard deviation of 15.4. Now suppose you were to ask if we have 5,000 subjects, what's the probability that 4,800 or more of them survive? Well actually in this case where we have a large sample size, we can use what's called the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. Now what's considered a large enough sample size is not an exact science, but generally the case is if you have n times p greater than or equal to 5 and n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 5, you can use the normal approximation. If you have a more conservative approach, you can change the number 5 to the number 10. So you're comparing n times p and n times 1 minus p to 10 instead of 5. In our case here, we have more than large enough of a sample size. We can use the normal approximation. At this point, all this is is just a normal distribution probability calculation. If you've seen my video on the normal distribution, you already know how to do these probability calculations. And we already calculated mu and sigma. All we have to do is calculate a z-score now. So z equals 4800 minus 4750 divided by 15.4. We get a z-score of 3.25. We go to our handy normal probability table. We look up the area to the left of z equals 3.25. We see that it's 0.9994. So we have to do one minus that because we're looking at the probability that z is greater than or equal to 3.25. So we find that probability to be 0 0.0006. All that to say, there's 0 0.0006 probability that 4,800 or more people would survive. I know, pretty morbid, right? So that wraps up how to use the binomial distribution as well as the normal approximation in order to do probability calculations. In practice, again, the binomial distribution is super common because there are tons of instances where you can assume the probability of success or you can look back at historical similar data to just infer it and then doing calculations like this becomes super straightforward. And again, in industry, you'll see cases like this all the time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button. Also leave a comment down below and tell me where you've used the binomial distribution. I'll see you all next time. Until then, Richard, on data.